Hello, uh, welcome to this uh, session. Uh, in my last two uh, videos, I introduced a uh, hidden mark of uh, models, what we can achieve uh, with them, and uh, what sort of uh, questions uh, we can answer using a uh, hidden mark of uh, models. Uh, I raised uh, three principal uh, questions we can address using hidden mark of models. Uh, in my last video, I addressed how we can uh, calculate the likelihood of observing a sequence of observations given uh, a model. Uh, today, we're going to focus on uncovering hidden states and how we can identify the most likely uh, state chain using uh, observations and uh, models. Remember, in hidden Markov models, we don't see the states directly. We don't have access to the states directly. What we have access to is a sequence of observations. Uh, sometimes uncovering the states is not interesting for us, like we uh, addressed this issue in my last video, but sometimes it's of profound importance to uncover uh, the states. Uh, for, to begin with, let's just assume uh, we know that Alice is certainly in Oxford. And once again, Ali, Alice posters a series of images uh, on her Instagram account telling us how she arrives um, or arrived in her office last week. Now the question is, given the observations, knowing that uh, sometimes she cycled, sometimes she drove, is it possible to guess the weather in Oxford? Uh, so here our assignment is uncovering the state's sequence. For example, based on the observation Alice posted on her Instagram account, the best sequence could have been this one. Uh, uh, let me rephrase this uh, one, uh, once again. Uh, regardless of the, or when she posted, the sequence of observations, the weather in Oxford was like this. So first two uh, days of uh, cloudy weather, followed by three consecutive days of sunshine, followed by cloud and then rain. Now, just based on this sequence of observations, in the models we have the transition probability and the observation probability distributions, is it possible to uncover this state change? There are different approaches to this problem. There is no ultimate approach really to, to date but I will show you two of the, these approaches and compare their advantages and disadvantages. Just before we proceed, we uh, uncovering the hidden state is very useful for different types of applications. For example, in medicine, uh, we take measurements. Uh, in cancer treatment, in cardiac treatment, in neurology, we take lots of uh, measurements. So we have the observations, 
but this observation should lead us to the actual condition of different organs, the actual uh, health of the patient. So uncovering the state in this regard is the most important uh, assignment, unlike in voice recognition, where we don't care about the underlying states. Instead, uh, our main uh, objective is to classify uh, you know, signals into different spoken uh, words. So uh, this assignment, today's assignment, uh, is of profound importance for different uh, probabilistic-based artificial intelligence. Unfortunately, this also requires some insight. So far, uh, the the cal you know the the calculation of probability uh, uh, values or the the determination of likelihood probabilities was relatively straightforward, but the uncovering of states is not straightforward, uh, and the uh, mathematics requires some attention. So I hope you follow this video with uh, due attention. Uh, sometimes if I am too fast for you, just pause, uh, take pen and pencil, and also calculate yourself to understand what I mean. Okay, let's begin. Uh, before we proceed to the uncovering of state, I'd like to introduce, introduce you uh, with the backward algorithm. You remember the alpha or the forward algorithm begins from uh, the, the first symbol and progresses uh, towards the end. The backward algorithm uh, does the opposite. It uh, begins from the last and progresses towards the beginning. Suppose this is what we would like to address. Given that, I am in state C at time t minus one. What is the probability of observing D at time t? That means, suppose it was cloudy on Saturday. Given that it was cloudy on Saturday in Oxford, what's the probability that Alice drives D uh, drives on Sunday. Remember, human beings always make decisions based on their past experience. So we are now given the, the model and we assume that on Saturday it is cloudy and we wish to determine the probability that Alice have taken her car on Sunday. It could be the case that the weather transited from cloudy to sunny, or from cloudy to cloudy, or from cloudy to rain. It's all possible. So we have to take all these three possibilities into account. That means, now we describe this statement I just mentioned, as beta t minus one, because at t minus one, we are in state C, we put it like beta t minus one of C. And this is described as the probability of observing the future symbol. The future symbol for our case being D, given that at t minus one, we are in state C or in more general terms, beta t of g simply means, given that we are in state j at time t, what's the probability of observing all the subsequent, the subsequent future symbols? Not the symbol at time t, but all the subsequent future symbols. The reason we define this um, 
uh, expression or this algorithm will be soon uh, apparent for you. Now, because we have now the model and we have the observation here, it is relatively straightforward to calculate this uh, beta t minus one of c. Because from c, we have to first run this uh, to rain with a probability of a c r and then observe d, that means b r of d plus we have to transit to C with a probability of A, C, C, and observe driving, that means B, C of D. B, C of D, remember the probability of observing D in state C. Likewise, we transit to S with a probability of A, C, S, and observe this in the state of Sun, sunny, that means B, S of D. So here is, are the, the possibilities and here, this is the probability. So we begin from, from the past, remember, and now we can progress backward. Suppose I want to now reason about the probability about beta t minus two. That means given that I am in state c at t minus two, what's the probability of observing all the future symbols? Not this one, but all the future symbols. That means from here, it could have transited into r, into c, and into s. And from S, it could have transited into all the possibilities. So now the, 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 the computation is more uh, complex. But don't worry, because when we were here already, I have showed you how we calculated beta t minus one of C, but we could also have calculated beta t minus one of S and beta t minus one of R. That means this is for beta t minus of r, could have calculated that, beta t minus one of c, and we have already this. So we don't have to recalculate everything all over again. So by the time we wish to calculate for beta t minus two, we just need to take into account the transition into all the different states, Take into account this symbol because we haven't considered this symbol when we were here. And then we calculate the, the beta for, for t minus one. So this is how we can calculate for beta t minus two. This must be very clear from the very beginning. Remember, if we are here, we just consider the observation of the future, but we don't consider the observation here. If we are here, we don't consider the observation for here, but for all of them. So if we want to include the betas from here, we have to also consider the observation because the betas here did not take into account the observation. So likewise, we can progress backward up to this point. And as I just mentioned, the beta for T, can take into account the beta for t plus one and the observation for t plus one in the transition from, uh, from all the, the, the uh, uh, from i to all the j's. That means if you consider, we have to consider the transition from c to r, c to c, and c to s. And that's what I mean by, uh, we have to consider from i to j for j running from one up to a. This is the backward algorithm. The reason will be clear so. Now coming back to the optimal states sequence. How can we uncover the weather representing the 
sequence of observations. Suppose, now we want to determine the best sequence for this, for this time. You know, on Thursday, what was the weather in Oxford? We wish to determine this. We are not interested in this one. Let's say, suppose we are interested to calculate the probability that on Thursday, the weather was cloudy. That means we consider all route leading to C, given this observation in, in hidden Markov model, I have said before, I want to repeat one more time, in hidden Markov model, because the states are hidden from us, we have to take all the evidence we have to reason about this hidden state. That means if we are interested to, cal to calculate the probability of being in C and observing all this, because the reason we, we are considering all the observation we have is that the transition between states is statistically speaking, depend states are statistically dependent upon one another. So we don't arrive at C just haphazardly. Instead, the previous state have made some contribution to that. So now we ask the following question. What is the probability that on Thursday, it was cloudy given these observations. That means we will consider all the, the, the ways leading to C in all the ways leaving C. And we calculate the probability of this constellation. That means we consider all the, the, the different combination up to this point all the different combination from this point onward, but here we fix or we insist that the weather was cloudy. And we describe this by gamma t of c. Gamma t of c means at time t, we are in state c, given the, the model for Oxford and the observation Alice has provided for us. Just since, remember, we have said, we have to consider all the evidence up to this point, including that the weather at this time, at time t, at time t is cloudy, and we have to consider all the weather, the, the, the evidence or the possibilities from here onwards, given that we are in state C, at time t. But remember, we have the alpha t of t and the beta t of t, the forward and the backward algorithms. Now we can take advantage of them. You remember, we have said the alpha t of c can be described as the probability of observing everything up to this point and the weather on Thursday being cloudy is described by alpha t of c. And we know how to calculate alpha t of t because we can take alpha one and then we can take alpha two and we can take alpha three and so on. So by using alpha t of t, we can account the evidence up to this, uh, we can account for the evidence up to this point. And then if we just look on the other direction, of course the beta, the backward algorithm, helps us to account for all the evidences fixing this, uh, the uh, state at time t to cloud. Now, if we combine alpha and t, they will account for the whole observation because alpha includes c, you know, you know, observing everything and that at 
time t, the state being c. Now, since the state is already c, and this we have taken into account, the beta does not uh, combine using end, but rather using conditional probability, because we don't have to calculate c twice. So once for alpha, taking into account qt is equal to c, and once for beta given qot, because we have assumed that at this point, the state is cloudy. If we multiply both of them, we will account for all the winners. Uh, sorry, for all the state sequence. So this multiplying alpha with beta gives us the probability of observing cloudy on Thursday. Now, look, the weather could have passed through R or the weather could have passed through S in the state of C. So that means we have, this is just one probability, but on Thursday, the weather should be either one of these. It cannot be out of this. That means if we add the probability of this, this, and this, it should give us one. So that means if we add gamma uh, T of i's, i running from one up to n, it should give us one. That means we can now use the alpha times beta. This is for the probability of the weather on Thursday being cloudy, but we can normalize it so that by adding the values of gamma, we have a probability of one. So gamma t of c will give us the probability that on Thursday, the weather was cloudy given all the evidence we have. Now we can calculate for this and for this also using the same approach. What we have is now gamma t of r, gamma t of c, gamma t of s. In the state which scored the highest, we can say that this is the most probable state on Thursday. So we will take the, the state, argmax here simply means the state having the highest score. Now we can move backward and forward and calculate the gammas for each in, uh, time instant. And then we have a chain of states, which we can consider the most probable states given the observation and the model. This is one way of calculating the most probable uh, sequence of states. Unfortunately, this has one problem. This approach does not take into account the, dependent, the dependency of the state at time t with the previous states. It, it calculates the states in isolation. So in moving from here to here, for example, we don't really take into account uh, the most probable or the, the most likely state which could lead to the following state. And we don't also look backward and see which would be the most probable state from which we can arrive at the individual states. So this approach simply examines the likelihood of individual uh, time instances without taking into account the future and the past. My favorite approach, and which I really enjoy and admire, is the Viterbi algorithm. The Viterbi algorithm is not straightforward. It really needs your uh, insight, and I hope I will be able to explain it uh, to you. The Viterbi algorithm exactly addresses the shortcomings of this approach I just 
explain. It always um, regards the present in view of the past event and takes into account not only the observation probability, but also the dependency between states. So let's begin. The V-therapy algorithm defines two important uh, parameters. So here I have just uh, summarized, so I will skip. It defines two, two parameters. The first one is scoring. It gives a score for each state at time t. So this is the score each state get. This score will be used to define the most probable route to arrive at a future state. And then the, the state which has the maximum score will be uh, psi t of SJ. This simply means the state, the, the value of psi is always a state. It's not a score. It's, called, it's not a number. It's a state. Uh, either uh, the value of psi of t for our case is either sunny, rainy, or cloudy. But the, the value of psi depends on the, the score. So I will explain to you like uh, as follows. Initially, we don't have any past route from which we can arrive at S or we can arrive at C or we can arrive at R. So Psi will be zero. Psi, remember, is the, the best state to arrive at the present state. The best state from which we can arrive at the present state will be uh, specified as psi of t. So in the beginning, what we can do is just give scores for this for these states. So we have in the beginning just one observation. So what is the what is the probability or which of state is the most probable to observe this state, uh, this uh, observation? So that one, we have to take into account two things. The first one is which of this state is the most probable, regardless of what we, we see. And secondly, in which of this state is, do we see this observation more likely? So we have to calculate two independent evidences. We have to take into account two independent evidences. So that means for R, we define a sigma one R. This means the, the score we give to R is the initial probability of R and the probability of observing cycling in R. Likewise, the score we give to the uh, C is sigma one C, and this is pi C BC of Y. Now these states have got scoring. Now our next, uh, the, the next question we wish to address is, which of these states will most likely lead to the next state? You remember here on, on Tuesday, for example, we may experience sunny, cloudy, or rainy. All are possible. But now we just focus on R. Let's say we focus on R and ask the following question. Of all these three states in the past, from which of them it is most likely to arrive at R? For example, if it were sunny on Monday, it's less probable to arrive at rainy on Tuesday. We would assume if it were rainy, it might still be rainy, it's most likely. But since it has been ra uh, raining uh, last night, 
probably we would expect either cloud, not really, or uh, semi. But if it were cloudy, for example, we can assume that, oh, then it's possible to, to rain. So we have to take into account the, the transition from this to this and from this to this. But at the same time, we have to also take into account that Alice has been driving uh, the, or cycling to her office. So we have to take all these probabilities to assume which of the, the routes, of these three routes, which of them is the most likely to arrive at these states. So here we have to take the scores they have, the score we have given them last uh, in our previous step, and also we have to take into account the transition, the, 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 the transition uh, probabilities. So the one which has got now the, the, the largest values here will be considered as the most likely state from which to arrive at R. So here we will depict it like this. For example, for our kids, the most likely, based on this analysis, the most likely state to arrive at R will be from here. Now we will move to the next. For, for this, uh, again, for, 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 for cloud, you see, we have three options and we will consider which of these three options, one, two, three, will be the most likely for, for this one. Again, for all of them, we have to calculate for this also. And let's say to arrive here, you must have come from rain. To arrive to cloud, you must have come from cloud. And to arrive at S, given this observation and the transition probabilities we have is for, uh, for example, S. So we will mark them with thick line to depict that these are the best routes to arrive at T2. Now, when we are here also, we have to give a scoring for, for this one based on now the fresh information we have. The information we have now, we have two information uh, and we have to give scoring. If we say that the, the best way to arrive here is this, what's also the probability that, sorry, what's also the probability that Alice comes by car to her office? Now we give uh, a scoring not only based on the, 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 the scoring we, we brought from, from the past, as well as the, the, the transition probabilities, but also taking into account the evidence, the fresh evidence we have. Now, once we have the scoring for this one, we can do now the, we, we can estimate the best route to arrive at um, at each state on, on Wednesday. So the best way, again, using this um, ArcMax uh, operation, we calculate for each of the, the states. So to arrive R, for example, uh, on, on Wednesday, we must have come from cloudy. To arrive at C, the best way would be R. And to arrive at S, the best way would be S. So we repeat this up to the, the last. Again, to calculate the, the, the best route to arrive at the different states on Thursday, we have to give, give scoring for this one based on all the observations we have, okay? So what we did is the following. Based on the observation we have, we give score. Based on the transition, we identify, sorry, we identify the, the best route to arrive at the different states. Again, based on the observation we have, we give ranking to each of the states. Again, by taking into account the transition probabilities, we calculate the best route to arrive at this one and do this for all the subsequent uh, stages. Now, you see, this is what we have calculated for all of them. 
the, the, the fake line indicating the best way to arrive from. So if we consider here, the best way to arrive from is S. For this one, the best way to arrive from is C and so on. Now, finally, for our final stage now, we compare the, the scoring for all the states at time capital T. Because remember, for each stage, we have scoring and uh, we have the, the delta value and the psi. Psi here is zero. Here we have delta and psi. Here we have delta and psi and so on. So here, now we co compare the scoring to determine which of the state is the most likely state at time capital T. So for our case, for example, sorry, for our case, for example, and then we assume, you know, after uh, comparing the scores, the best state which scores the highest we call that, okay, that is the state for time capital for T. For time capital T. Now for this case, for example, we went after we have done this uh, comparison, the state we identify is, let's say, rain. Now, this decision helps us at once to determine two things. First, we know that now the, the, the state is rainy at time capital T, but now we can backtrack and say, okay, which was the state to come, the, the optimal state to arrive at R? When we look back, oh, it was C. And then when we are here, which was the state to arrive at, the, 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 the most likely state to arrive at capital C? Oh, it was S. And if we take a look, which was the state to arrive at S? Of course, it's another S again. By so doing, we can trace our way to the, to the end. This is how the V-T-R-B algorithm functions. Now, the uh, V-T-R-B algorithms takes into account both the transition probability as well as the probability of observing each symbol at at that uh, time and takes the dependency between neighboring uh, states into account to construct a complete view, complete uh, chain. As a summary, initially we just score, we just assign a score to each of the states, taking into account their initial probability as well as the observation probability distribution. But since initially we don't arrive to each of the state from somewhere, psi will be zero. We don't arrive there. But for all the subsequent cases, sorry, for all the subsequent cases, now we have to take into account both the scoring and the, the best route to arrive from. Finally, we take we, we compare the score of the different state and designate the one which scored the highest as the most likely state. And from then onwards, we just need to trace our way back to construct a complete picture. This is how the Peter B algorithm uh, functions. I hope you understand the uh, the the essence of today's lecture. Uh, admittedly, it's not. Uh, straightforward. It needs some thinking, uh, reflection, and uh, maybe some calculation, and I encourage you to do all these uh, things to uh, understand the two approaches we covered today. Uh, by this, we come to the uh, conclusion of today's lecture. In the last video, we will be dealing with updating uh, model parameters when fresh set of observations become available for us. For me, bye for, uh, for now and see you next time.